I need to buy a little mini level, a little mini, little mini four-way level that I can stick on the top of my GoPro cases. Since I don't have any level land that I live on, say so that three times fast. I need a level land that I live on, I need a level land that I live on, I need a level land that I live on. Welly, well, well. What do we have here? So, after after much time and uh, much searching and much money, I think I have a setup, fingers crossed, to drive these freaking auger stakes. And it doesn't hurt that it's been raining real good over the last 24 hours. So, what we got here is a brand new DeWalt. $220 D-handle SDS plus adapter bit three option rotary hammer drill with chipping drilling and uh, drill hammer action so an SDS plus bit what that is is that a weird little three channeled well, four channel, two channel, and then two smaller. Like, didn't know what that was. So, and primarily this is used in the automobile industry, apparently, for uh, separating metal pieces that are kind of compression fit, I guess. And then shipping concrete into the construction industry, like breaking up little bits of concrete. Uh, or digging through ground, or uh, drilling through railroad ties, or so basically what you, know, you can find like paddle bits for for digging, and chipping bits for like chiseling bits for like chipping concrete, and drill bits for drilling, and that's all like the the, the, the hardware store has. So I had to go online and get an array of things. So I got this. I got I got a series of SDS plus uh, adapter bits. And I got a half inch here, which is what I need for this eye bolt driver, which so hopefully, but this whole pack of these was like $9. So I'm not holding out great hope that these aren't going to shatter. So I'm going to need to get full on safety geared up. And then my, hopefully my, 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 my final option, if nothing else, is I got a, uh, I got a reversible. So I've got this Bosch SDS plus adapter bit that goes up to a half inch. Uh, opening it's key chuck and it came with this rubber piece on it like this and it looks like it wants me to take it off and put it on like this It'd be nice if there were some actual directions in it I'm not really this rubber piece is confusing me it was locked on to the end of the you know I'm not gonna take this key tool off but it was locked over this piece and I'm like how do you get any of the stuff in there I said it was half inch I pried it off popped it off it looks like it wants me to put it on here thusly but that's silly. If anything, it would you would think it'd be like that. Either way, I don't think it fits, regardless. Yeah, so that's not gonna go on at all, and I'm not sure why it wants me to have it on. There we go. Alright. Oh no, that's probably good. We'll test out the durability of the DeWalt, we will, for fuck sucks. Alright. Such a noob. I just remembered, if you plug this side of the cord in, it uh, helps just a little bit. Alright, let's try this again. Ooh. Crazy. I'm definitely going to need some ear protection and some eye protection. Alright, here we go. Here goes nothing. Is it going in? Yeah, it's going in.
Okay. This is this is what we're working with. Oh, you really gotta give it. Okay. God damn. Maybe I'll try just drill for a minute. Oh God. Now that was a great idea. Fuck my back up. Messing around with this. Oh. I'm gonna go ahead and try this uh Try this one. See how she works. Uh, seems somewhat better. Doesn't seem to be driving down very well. Oh, she's heating up. Man, I wonder if there's concrete there or something. Boy, it's hard to keep it straight. You see how easy it put the rebar in the ground, but it's not doing this worth a good gut dang. So, back to the drawing board. Just the right size, bro. Just the right size box. Oh my goodness. Well, I apologize. Are you on crack? Are you smoking crack? don't have much battery and I'm about to stain these cabinets that are going to go above my washing machine that I had special ordered and took forever to get here. Uh, the guy just opened them up and realized 
Not only did they not include a shelf, which they always do, they don't even have the freaking holes in the side to mount a shelf. What a bunch of assholes. And they did a terrible job mounting the cabinet hard. Those screws are cattywampus as dicks. Son of a bird. If you can at all avoid it, do not stain directly in the sun because a stain dries way too quickly. Yeah, stain dries way too quickly and you end up you end up doing a lot more work trying to trying to keep it from drying too quick, trying to wipe off the excess. So yeah, definitely probably probably stain in the shade or inside, which I always have. And this time I was just like, well, it's just two cabinets, I'm just going to stain them real quick. No, no. It's going to be the worst stain job I've ever done. Okay. I don't know how much y'all came across on the GoPro and how much y'all saw, but they trenched up all the way to the pole. Got this orange tube coming up at both ends that will eventually be for fiber optics. It'll be here within a, sometime between a year and three years. And then this is going to the pole, securing those lines, if you can even see them, that are tied to this guide, guide wire right now. Not guide wire, whatever these anchor uh, turnbuckle lines are called. And those are just sitting there, taped off, waiting to be connected. On this end, you see them curled around here on the ground. And uh, just waiting for the electrician to call me and uh, set up an appointment. But meanwhile, they left this untrenched because I gotta knock this footing out so I can have the pipe go right up against the wall. So I got a good thing I bought a rotary hammer drill last week. And I just went and spent a hundred bucks on bits. Not exactly sure which ones I'll need, but I got enough for future endeavors as well. So we're gonna do that. So here we go. So we have an active tornado warning right over in that area. I don't know if those are low clouds or steam coming off the trees, but there's a warning about a mile and a half that way. It's a, this is a tropical tornado, so it's probably be pretty small, EF0, maybe EF1. I don't hear anything, but I almost wonder if that's somehow, if that's debris. I mean, that looks a little swirly. I mean, I wonder if that's what they're talking about. There's this radar indicator rotation, and some people said they did see physical rotation. I don't think they saw touchdown, at least not when I'd come outside, but I'm not sure what that is. That looks like this fog or clouds coming off the trees. But I'm going to be so happy here in a month or two to have my freaking storm shelter. Oh my goodness. Have my little teapot in there for fuck's sakes. Just sit there drinking tea, watching my videos on my phone. Oh my goodness. As I'm about to have a heart attack out of this shit. <laughs> huh. According to what the weather dude just said, with these tropical tornadoes, he was showing the wind shear is like 27 miles per hour with a regular wind of like 13, so it seems low. But then he said it's also hard to get a good reading on these tropical type of tornadoes because they don't actually form... Uh, they form lower... So yeah, they said the, the, the storms, the tornadoes tend to form at an elevation too low for the radar to properly get a read at, a read of. So that very well could be what we were looking at. Because I went and looked at the map, that is directly where it is. And it's all gone now. You see how fast everything's moving.
Can you see it? Can you see how fast everything's moving? It's booking it. If it looks that fast from the ground, it's really booking it. Uh, and yeah, they're still showing the tornado on radar, and it's going fast enough that it's out, actually outrunning the radar, and there's that stuff that we were seeing way back over here earlier. And we're watching it there. Now it's all the way over there. You can barely see some of that white wispy above the trees. Well, maybe that's not what it is, but... Oh, I tried about where it would be at. I thought those were funnel clouds for a minute. Yeah, but these clouds are really booking it. Alright, I hope we're not in for much more of these uh, shenanigans. As my heart can't take it. One of the reasons my channel does so poorly, probably, is because I don't give a flying fuck about the aesthetic of the videos for the most part. I mean, I try to be artistic in my editing with the, my time-lapse music and stuff, but as far as, like, really, dude, you're going to film your stuff on the counter with your mixer and your coffee pot and your other coffee pot and your dirty dishes in the sink and your clean dishes drying and your laundry baskets and your cabinets you haven't put up and your uncompleted cabinets you don't even have the end panels on. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that because... Like I said, I don't give a f Okay, so I got just about everything I need here for my uh, for my whole steering assembly upgrade. How you doing? Not steering assembly, you know, just control, control, uh, motorcycle control upgrade, I guess would be the best. Uh, so yeah, I got my Pro Taper Fusion bars, which uh, are lockable. You can unlock them. They flex. You can lock them. Well, they won't. At 30, 32% more flex when they're unlocked. And then I got the Acerbus X Factor hand guards, so I don't bust my, so I don't bust my phalanges. I got my my uh, my Universal 7 8 to 1 8 for my bars there, and uh, bar clamp adapters. I got my new Pro Taper pillow top grips which I really hoped was going to include some glue but no apparently no so I gotta still get some grip glue and I got my little my little Kawasaki donuts that'll you know slide on the grips and fit on the inside to keep you from getting blisters although that's not probably a really problem for me and then I got my new ASV off-road F2 series uh, unbreakable and adjustable clutch lever with perch and brake lever. How you doing? So I still got to get grip glue and some contact spray. And uh, the contact spray, not a big deal. I can probably pick that some uh, at the hardware store or AutoZone or something. But grip glue, I'm probably going to have to order because the closest cycle store is like, you know, 75 miles away. <laughs> not driving 75 miles. I've never done any of this. Pretty sure I can get everything off and on, back on. I'm a little bit scared about the cables. If there's any adjustment, I definitely don't know how to do that. And uh, I've never taken off grips or put grips on. Everything else seems more or less like it's going to be pretty straightforward. But anyway, so yeah, I'll, get, I'll order some grip glue now. And I'll probably just order some contact spray also since I'm doing the ordering anyway. Plastic, if you can believe that. Come on, we're gonna have to get one of those hats with the net around it to keep these damn bugs out there. Since I live in the tropics now, apparently. I am getting eaten 
alive out here. We're in this little funky thing. Oh, it's definitely a little funky thing. Careful. Got a lot of clips, right? Let's hook into it. And that locks this into itself, but I'll probably just take it off. For now, and thread these together. That's probably the best way to not lose it. The line is twisted around, and the ignition was twisted around like once. Remember to check that, make sure they don't bind when you do a full turn when you come back. slid that bottom rubber piece off after that top rubber piece and then like so he's basically gonna fit together like this and that covers the throttle cables here and that looks yeah so they just kind of pop out of here so there is only two holes and one wraps around Thusly. Sorry, I'm just sweating. So there you go, like that. And the bottom one. Same thing. Make sure the cable isn't twisted. Sweat in my eyeballs. Can't see. Make sure cable's not twisted. Put it in. And then lay it down. It'll be like that. Okay, that's that. That was a lot easier than I thought. Let's, uh, let's work on these handlebars. Okay, so all my levers were 8s, if I remember correctly, and this is a 12. Wow. These sure seem to come off. I swear one of them I didn't even loosen. Well, Loctite will be going back in these. So we got one of those squat trucks. I'm sure I've shown it in videos. It lives down the road. And I swear, like, I saw him forever and I just thought, <laughs> I just thought that uh, he hadn't finished his lift kit. <laughs> I didn't know that that was a thing now. To actually have squat trucks. Okay, that's that, and hopefully this will come off like that. You can probably see that the bars are a pretty close match. The, uh, the handlebars and the silver ones slant up more, but the sweep is about the same, and I guess the pro tapers are a tad bit shorter in overall length, but otherwise they're pretty, pretty darn close. But I forget which, uh, I think this is, might be the rise, and the rise is a little bit more on these, but these are a little bit closer to motocross, so hopefully, uh, I don't know, I've never, I've never experimented, so we'll see how it works out. Okay, first thing we got is our Pro Taper Universal Bar Camp, Bar Camp, Bar Clamp Grip, in order to, uh, mount our one eighth one and one eighth bar whatever it is on the seven eighths okay it looks like the new ones are ten and it doesn't look like uh 
Doesn't look like I'm even going to use the old bar thing over the top. I think these are just the new bar things over the top. So this came off the old one, and two of these are going to replace, as far as I can tell. Okay, and we even got an Allen now. Okay, so it looks like, uh, let me double check. Okay, see there, the bolt holes that are going to go into the original holes are on the inside, and the other holes are on the outside. So it's going to go like that. No matter which side we're looking at it from, that's the outside. So I'm going to get some Loctite. Get some Loctite and proceed to put that in. Okay, we got it. You know what? Let's see if I can get y'all a better angle. Okay, so the wide piece, the hangover piece is on the outside. Got a little bit of Loctite here. Get my Allen wrench out. And get her locked down. And Loctite, a little dab will do you, but it tends to come out pretty vigorously, so careful. And it says to tighten down to 15 to 17 pounds of torque, but I'm just tightening them down. I don't have a little bitty torque wrench. And the last time I used a torque wrench, I messed some shit up, so I quit that kind. Okay, that's the one. Might want to wipe out any uh, squeeze out you have from your Loctite if you use it. Or maybe you don't care. God dang it. Oh, my hands are literally too sweaty to grip the freaking screw. Son of a dick. Come back over here and get my freaking my Allen wrench. Sounds like old Squatty himself. Nope, it's not. I should have known. It wasn't grumbly rumbly enough. Give him a little extra tweak just in case. That way nobody can say anything. Yeah, I will tell you, I'm not a big fan of those taper. Of these uh, Allen head screws. I'm not a big fan of Allen head screws for, for torquing down shit. That doesn't seem... Doesn't seem very smart to me. I was wondering if these have been used before. I don't know why they would come with zip ties on them. I don't know why they would come with zip ties on them. Alright, let's see. I need to remember to slip this thing on first. And this is going to be my right. And it specifically says to make, a, to make the squeeze even, but it shows that there's going to be a gap. You're not going to squeeze it all the way down. Got time to get some more blue Loctite. Whew, I barely had enough. Okay, I think I probably need to get on it now. Okay, that's definitely, definitely good enough. And again, in case there's any squeeze out, which would be weird, 
but you can see the blue Loctite between the stigma rag in there a little bit, clean up the edges where there's might be a little bit of bleed out. 24 hours for a full cure of blue Loctite, according to Google. Kind of weird that the whole setup is black and then they give you silver bolts. But whatever. It's all good. I probably just need to start checking those once a month. Okay. So I got a few different options. I actually have some Pro Taper glue coming, which I'm probably going to wait for. But I also got some Clear Grip Gorilla Glue. And it kind of indicates that you got a little bit of work time. I was just worried that it was going to dry too quick. My other option was some enamel clear coat spray paint. Clear just because, you know, I mean, I guess I could use black. So I got black bars, but supposedly that works good. You spray it inside your grip tube and roll it around and dump out the extra and then slide it on how you want it. But I'm still debating how I'm going to do that. And right now, I'm just going to go ahead and put on this old throttle tube. Go ahead and clean it out with some contact spray, some quick drying contact spray. Not that it's old enough to really need it. I probably wouldn't use Loctite, even if I hadn't run out. I probably would avoid using Loctite on this part. Unless I found that it was slippy for some reason. If I found that it was slippy, I'd probably go ahead and, you know, use some, potentially. There's a little lip on the smaller piece of rubber that goes over the cables. At the end of this lip can basically sit inside. So this little this little lip, just make sure you don't pull it off too much and it'll sit right inside this other lip. Okay, I apologize, the battery did die. And I didn't want to go in and get another one. I don't I'm a big fan of not stopping working when I'm working and in the mood and in the zone. Alright, so I'm using the same perch. From a brake that was on there. Yeah, it's a 10 and a 10 on bottom. So 10 on top, 10 on bottom, you take that bolt out and you can put your you can put your ASV off-road F2 series brake lever right in there, no worries. And then for the clutch, you do have to change out the entire perch unless you get a you do have to change out the entire perch on the clutch unless you get a special uh, assembly because this clutch perch won't go in there and uh, or the clutch won't go in this uh, this whole diameter is different than that whole diameter so there's some universal piece you can get to adapt that or you can just get the whole kit and caboodle which this is like cheap aluminum anyway and this is steel and literally putting this back on I actually stripped it out just screw it in so I would have had to replace it anyway and then right here is this wire, this wire that feeds through, and it used to be, you know, right here through this little plastic. How you doing? And it's got a pin in there, which you may or may not be able to see. Oh, you can't see it because it's it's out. This was the pin. So the pin was in there and it fell out. But there's a pin attached to a spring that also fell out, and that way, when you engage the clutch, it's a safety, so it won't start in gear. And so now. I figured I was in here trying to figure out, you know, I did some reading before I totally pulled it out of there. 
and it appears that yeah it's just a safety thing and you can just disconnect it and hide it but the thing is okay if it's separated and no wires are touching see no wires are touching power on the bike on first gear no start neutral bike will start now if these are touching yeah see if they're touching see I was trying to start in first gear now before that's what the clutch thing was for you could have it in first gear and if you pulled the clutch in it would start if these aren't touching then it's never gonna start unless it's in neutral and if they are touching then it's gonna start regardless of what gear is in and regardless of whether or not the clutch is pulled in so for safety's sake I'll probably go ahead and keep tape them off separated and that way uh, I don't have to worry about them touching and I don't have to worry about starting in gear and hurting myself since I'm old and forgetful I did put this pillow top grip on I did not get it twisted so that the pro taper was straight across which I don't really care about because it's going to be cut off anyway when my uh, bar grips go on I did use that Gorilla Glue it's a little bit tackier than I would have liked and I put some around the inside rim and then I put like three lines on the bar and then it just ended up pushing the most of the glue with the grip so then I got a one of those you know auto rags one of those red auto rags to because that's what was handy to get off all the excess glue which then put gluey fuzzies all over the inside of my my thing here but then I took a I just took some mineral spirits and a paper towel and all that came right off I'm not going to fuck with my throttle tube until I get that pro taper glue I'm not going to attempt to use that gorilla contact glue with that and I mean honest to god I may not do anything with it for a while I may just leave it the grip's brand new it's not worn out yet I may just wait till it worn, wears out and then replace it all right this little red one's about perfect so I just cut it in half and I'm going to slip one over each one that's fine okay and then I'll go ahead and I'll get one bigger one and put it over the whole thing that's pretty good there's a little bit of red showing and then just because I really want it sealed I'm gonna go ahead and get another red one a bigger one I mean I could use black but the next black ones I have are gigantic and I'm not sure they'd shrink right make sure everything's copacetic I think I will just kind of tape it to itself here. I think that'll be good. It does really piss me off though that uh, I got nothing from Pro Taper as far as, uh, as far as stickers go. It's like, dude, I spent like 160 bucks on this freaking bar. Everybody sends me stickers. Hell, I got stickers from a place I don't even order from. Like, <laughs> I got stickers on my bike for. I don't even know, this motosport.com, I don't even know what I ordered from motosport.com. I don't think anything. I think they just sent it with a Revzilla order or something. Got these extra Kawasaki donuts I can put on. Not extra, I mean, I got these Kawasaki donuts I can put on. Guess you could put them on black side out if you didn't want to show the Kawi. Noise. Apparently the service are pretty easy. You just get the corresponding pieces, you know, so the service is facing up on both, both ends. And then you get these little screws right here, and you just pop them in through the three holes in the plastic, and then snug them up, and then that'll be your end result. And you got three little funky pieces. You got your long bolt, and your little barrel-looking slip thing, and then another little barrel-looking slip thing with some jobby dobbles. And you just you just put your bolt through yonder. And then you put that on like it's so. And then that slips into the slips into the slot like that. And you screw this on. And it'll only go on a little bit. And then just you push it forward so it locks in there. That's not gonna be, you know, and that'll tighten up when we gotta screw it up. That'll presumably tighten up. I guess I gotta cut a hole. Be careful working with the razor, don't cut yourself. Okay, then you just take your bolt your big bolt and you screw this piece on and then you shove the end in the end there and I'm gonna have to cut off some zip ties here because end up being in my way I'll have to figure out another zip tie situation here in a minute
Okay. That's all there is to it, I guess. And, you know, I put the curve down to clear my lines. I guess it can go either way. Okay, so yeah, I don't need any inserts because I got the fat bar. I kind of wish I would have gotten green or white, though. Kind of looks weird with my my white number plate and black hand, black uh, bar, please, black barn busters. Barn busters, good God, black bark busters. So yeah, you just stick that screw through there and then you screw this bad boy on and you don't worry about tightening it down all the way as you do that later just get her on there Okay, so that pisses me off to no end because that hole's just simply not big enough. <sighs> so I don't know what to do. I got that one on. I mean, these are supposed to be the unbreakable levers. So maybe it's not a huge deal, but if I'm going through the tree, I need to have my hand. If I'm going through the woods and trees, I need to have my hands protected, so it kind of is a big deal. Okay, so I did a little reading, and uh, you have to take a... Uh, you have to take this throttle, uh, you know, you have to take your throttle off and you have to take a hacksaw or something and just lop the end off. Okay, battery died and I went in and finished putting it on. So yeah, you gotta take a hacksaw or a Dremel tool or something. I was actually using a Dremel metal blade that wasn't one to work great. So uh, I just got a hacksaw and it worked great. I might have taken off a little bit too much, but I can always purchase another throttle tube. But honestly, I think it's fine never gonna it's never gonna get stuck so I'm never gonna have a wide open throttle all, right. all I need now is a pipe and a seat pipe and a seat I got my IMS super stocks I got my dyno jet power commander 5 under the seat I got my new pro taper fusion the Henry Reed yeah I got the Henry Reed pro taper fusion Henry Reed bars I got my new, uh, my new pillow top pro taper grips, at least on one side. I got my little Kawasaki donut to keep me from getting blisters. I got my pro taper fusion bar pad. I got my AVS never break, never break. Kind of pointless now, kind of pointless with the bark busters. I know I did overkill, but I knew the AVS would fit. And, uh, the other ones that fit were cheap options, so I'd rather get better ones. And then, of course, I got my Service X Factor Bark Busters, because yeah, I freaking did. So, yay for me. Okay. Sorry, it's treacherous ground. Sorry about the shaky camera. So, yeah, it kind of bites that everything's on the left hand side. I really like the angle with the GoPro on the right hand side. But uh, unfortunately, as you can see, there is just not enough room. I don't think I ever noticed until like this week that it's never perfect. That it's never like, it's almost like it's designed wrong or something. Oh, I'm an idiot. There's little things it hooks onto. Here's my sign. Well, let me unscrew it before I break it. Okay, better, that is hilarious. I was looking at it just the other day after I got everything put back together. And I'm like, it is so weird that None of this stuff lines up, and then I never noticed how bad it looked before. Looks like I might have scratched my fender a little bit riding around. Oh no, rubbing it against it. Oh no! Oh no! But yeah, that's the setup, boys and squirrels. But anyway, so that is the 100% full install video, minus, you know, I didn't include me putting on my, you know, but those aren't hard. The quad lock and the the mirror back well, I don't know if I should I don't think I yeah I didn't show the mirror going back on I didn't show my GoPro mount going on I didn't show my reroute of the stop switch but it wasn't that difficult I basically just unclipped all the things had my number plate off ran it accordingly checked the checked the clearance made sure it didn't bind and it, it wasn't wasn't that there was still some still some uh, slack in it when I turned the opposite direction and so that's good it took a little bit 
I still got muscle memory. I still try to turn off my bike over here. Um, <laughs> but other than that, yeah, so that is literally, and the only reason I made such a comprehensive video, although I'm sure the vast majority of people did not watch it, I'm also going to break it up into shorts. Uh, but it's just because I couldn't find a video. I literally could not find an all-inclusive video showing you how to take everything off and put everything back on. And since I had literally never done anything like this before in my life, I was quite nervous undertaking it. it turned out to be incredibly easy, but I didn't know that until I had accomplished it. And I often tackle projects that don't turn out so well. So, but that's it. That's the full video of a complete overhaul for all your control modules, uh, minus all your hand control modules, I should say on a 2021 KLX 300R. So, all right, hope you enjoyed. Later.